So if the consumer, if we keep in mind what, what the consumer does with around branded fast moving consumer goods products and let's be honest, the public and employers and they're both our, both the public and employers are our target audience uh, regarding this. For, for a middle to senior manager, you know, a reputation, I mean we can see what happens when our reputation gets trashed and so, uh, so proactive steps to establish a position is a is a, uh, an important thing. So the public and employers are generally en masse competent, fairly empowered, connected. They have, uh, they have the capability to, to Google. If, if one is to Google Andrew Stevens or Cullen Habel, the world, there will be results coming back here. There is a willingness to, uh, uh, consumers, are, uh, consumers in this case, public and employers are willing to share brand experience and, and their experiences with us. So social media is, is, as I say, one of the key drivers that is forcing us as individuals to, to apply some of these branding principles. People are not going to spend um, a mountain of time talking through the intricacies of he said this, he said that. You know, they're, they're you know, often empowered but, but you know, vaguely interested consumers. They're looking to maximise the value return on, on any particular attention they're spending. So with that in mind, keeping in mind who the consumers are, why, why uh, would a brand be useful both as a brand manager of consumer goods products or as a manager of our own personal brand? Consumers, our audiences, employers, uh, the people who might, might develop an opinion of us um, consume all, all sorts of risks. You know, an employer might might take us and 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 we might do a fantastic interview and uh, and be junky on the job. Well, you know, personal branding allows employers to mitigate that risk um, in a branding sense, physical well-being or health. Financial risk from an employer or a public's point of view is uh, is quite clearly one of the things. The embarrassment from from employing or engaging a consultant who is uh, who is just really not not up to the job. Um, you know, um, people contracting our services or uh, looking to employ us are uh, are open to all of these levels of risk. So, uh, so as a uh, as a uh, as a um, operant, uh, as an operator out there in in the business world, whoever we are, it's a brand. I will show you ever so briefly. It was from last night's uh, uh, last night's grow and transfer. I might say, last night's grow and transfer was. Uh, talked through the process, I actually don't have it up here I must say, talked through the process of the Queen and the Royal Family being a, uh, being a brand. And so, uh, so they, <laughs> it was a, an interesting little segment, still available on iView, but an interesting segment of the Carlton United brand being laid side by side with uh, some of the Royal Family pomp and ceremony uh, that was surrounding it, and, and the Grill and Transfer team did quite a neat job of talking through that the royal family brand is brand, brand Great Britain, brand, uh, brand um, England, and and the process being different sub brands being Charles and uh, and uh, William and and uh, of course Elizabeth. So as we move through, it's. Uh, um, my argument being whoever we are, it's a brand and I, I come back to, to these points about, uh, about if we are going to be putting ourselves out there as a product, if we're going to spend time talking about, uh, about we are, we are a, uh, uh, here to deliver a value product to you, I come back to, to traditional branding theory as, uh, as, as covered by Professor Uncles in that text and, and actually the chapter written by Professor Mike Beveland of, uh, of Bath University um, told, tells a great story of, uh, of Quaker Oats buying a little brand, a, a, a lovely little brand of Snapple in the US and, uh, and by trying to apply, uh, uh, trying to apply big marketing principles, uh, they, uh, they bought the product for uh, 
1.7 billion and uh, were forced to sell it three years later for three, 300 million dollars. Effectively made a loss on the product because, because they started to slickly market the product and the, the thing they were losing, the thing that reduced their equity or the, the, the market valuation to be honest of the, uh, of the Snapple brand was, was that they trashed the, uh, the um, authenticity of the brand. Another um, example from industry, um, the Dun Dunlop Volley product in the 1970s. It was, it was a cash cow. Um, the, uh, the parent company um, sold the product, didn't add mu much investment to the product for, for a long time until, until the mid-1990s. You know, it was recognised as the sort of same shoes that Grandpa wore when mowing the lawns. So this latent brand equity was sitting in there in the, uh, in the Dunlop volleys until the 1990s where, where the history of Dunlop volleys and Ken Rosewall winning Wimbledon wearing a pair of Dunlop volleys was all sitting there. The brand history was sitting there and kids began to pull these products, the, these the Dunlop volleys out of dad's sheds and tried to find, tried to find a, uh, um, a, uh, a, a, an example of their own individuality. Dunlop Volley didn't overplay it, didn't do the Snapple uh, or Quaker Oats Snapple overplay. Instead of slick marketing, a little bit of, of grassroots, um, um, grassroots support to, the, uh, to this retro rejection that these 1990s kids were, uh, were going for anyway. So, so Pacific jumped on board with, this, with the feeling of the brand and uh, made, a, made, made, made a great success out of it. I'm coming, there we go. So the, uh, the, the argument I'm playing here is, uh, is you know, in the brand world and in the individual's world, you know, authenticity is a, uh, is, is a matter of being real rather than, rather than you know, pretending to be real. So I, uh, I come back to one of my favourite, one of my favourite uh, uh, stories and one of my favourite passages from a movie. Let me do this. Looking again. Now, of course, I understand the uh, the bandwidth issues, which probably mean we've got some lags here. You won't lose for war, father. Congratulations. I shall sacrifice a hundred bulls to honor your child. Save the bulls. Honor Maximus. He won the battle. General. General. Rome salutes you, and I embrace you as a brother. It has been too long, my old friend. Highness. Here, father. Take my arm. I think it is time for me to leave. So much for the glory of Rome. And I think there is a place for that uh, that form of honour and uh, and. Uh, and personal authenticity in uh, in the building of a uh, of a personal brand. I won't run the second YouTube video that uh, that I had spoken to as this um, uh, is where Dr. Cox does a performance review of uh, of in in Scrubs. Dr. Cox doing a performance review of JD. A great little uh, a great little passage, but uh, but uh, but. We can see, and you could even look at the Cullen of Adelaide YouTube channel and uh, and pick it up. It's all sitting there as a uh, as a public video.